In the previous lesson, we simulated a ball being projected from the ground up into the air. It comes back down and then it bounces. And we calculate what happens until the ball comes to rest. In this lesson, we're going to do the same calculations, but with the help of a graphical user interface. To get a graphical user interface, you type graphical user interface development environment or guide for shorts. Click on blank graphical user interface in this dialog. Now we have the development environment. We're going to use two inputs, one for the coefficient of restitution and one for the initial vertical velocity. An input box is on this button here and a static text is on that button there. So we'll use the static text as a label for the input box. So we'll select one of those. If we double click on the object, we get what's called the object inspector. The name of the object is text one. And at the moment, the string that's displayed here is called static text. So let's change that to coefficient of restitution. And we need to stretch the box a bit to fit all that text in. And then we need an input box. The name is edit one. We're going to put in a value of 0 0.9. Then let's copy these two and then paste a new pair. For the text, we'll have initial vertical velocity. And for the initial value, let's have 15 meters a second. We need a push button to do the calculations and we'll set the caption for that to be run. And then let's move all of these down a little bit. Because the final thing we want is a graph. So those are the elements we need in our graphical user interface. Now, if we click the run button, MATLAB will ask us for a file name and it will then create all the files we need to have a graphical user interface. We'll call this lesson four. And here you can see it's created the graphical user interface. We're a little bit too close to the edge there, but apart from that, the layout of everything else is fine. Now, these input boxes are general purpose input boxes. So I can type text into these boxes as well as numbers, which is something we're going to have to control. So the first thing we'll do is to move the graph slightly to the right, and then we'll control the coefficient of restitution input box. So let's close that, go back to the graphical user interface, We'll move that just slightly to the right. Now we have a callback for the edit one. So what we'll do here is we'll start by getting the value that's in the, in the edit box. What we've done is we've said, get the value that's contained in the input box and then convert that value into a number. Now, if there's a number in the box, COFR, coefficient of restitution, will contain the number. If there are any alpha characters or anything of that sort in the box, then we'll, we'll get an empty value. So what we'll do is say if the coefficient of restitution is empty, we'll set the value to be 0 0.9 and then we'll put that value into the input box. So that way we can trap any alpha input instead of just a numeric input. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that the values don't exceed certain limits. So if the value is less than 0.1, we're going to set the value to be 0.1 and put that value into the string box. And if the value is greater than 0.9, we're going to put 0.9 in, into the variable and then put that value back into the string box. If the coefficient of restitution was zero, we would have a divide by zero error and if the coefficient of restitution was 1, the ball would bounce forever, so we'd have an infinite loop. In this way, we've trapped both those conditions, as well as non-numeric input. Now we'll do the same things for the initial vertical velocity. We start by getting whatever's in the text box with that statement. 
We convert that into a number and then we put that value into UY. If there are any alpha characters in the string, UY will be empty. If UY is empty, we say set the value to be 15 and put that value back into the text box. Next we say if the value is less than 1, then we set the value to 1 and put that value in the text box. And then finally we say if the value is greater than, let's say 25, we set the value to be 25 and put that value back in the text box. Now if we've got this right, the coefficient of restitution can only have the values between 0.1 and 0.9 and the initial vertical velocity can only have the values from 1 to 25. So let's run the program and see if that works. So if we put a value of 0.99 our code sets it back to 0.9. If we say minus 0.9 our code sets it to 0.1. If we put in some alpha characters they get cleared out and we put the value back to 0.9. And if the initial velocity is let's say minus 15 it sets it to 1. If we say we'd like 100 it sets it to 25. If we click the run button nothing's going to happen because uh, we've not put any logic in that yet. Now we uh, now we're going to look at the run button. The first thing we need to do is to get the coefficient of restitution and we do that by saying get handles edit one. It returns a string which we will then convert into a number and put the value into E. The next thing we'll do is to get handles edit two. It returns a string. We convert the string to a number and put the value into UY. We set up our initial variables. You see we're dividing by E here, so E can't be zero. And then we define our nested loops. We have the outer loop that says as long as UY is greater than 0 0.0 and we have the inner loop which says as long as T is, great, is less than the time of flight. So now we're in a, in a position to test this. We run the program. And if we just say run, there's our plot. If we say the coefficient of restitution is 0 0.5 and then run that, we get a different bounce pattern. If we say our initial velocity is 5 meters per second instead of 50 meters, so we bounce up to 12 meters there. With 5 meters we bounce up to 1.3 or... So it looks as if our graphical user interface is working properly. We need to check that the, the values that it calculates are correct, but at least the graphical part of it is working properly. That's the end of lesson four. In lesson five, we're going to convert this graphical user interface into a standalone application. <laughs>